What am I doing exactly here right now? Somebody can tell me. I am? What am I doing? Just look at me and you'll know. You tap on your leg. And? <laughs> and what am I doing? And then that? Keep your head up. And what else? Talking. What am I doing? Talking. Time. Talking. Oh, talking. So I'm talking and tapping at the same time. Which means that when I'm doing this with you guys, this this person that is doing this is not the same person as the person who is doing the talking. Which, I, by the way, would allow me to do much more elaborated stuff like this, no? Tap or like improvise a rhythm of some kind. And in the same time, I am, I am, I'm having a conversation with you, you see? I can even like count to 10 pulls that has nothing to do with it, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And you see my tempo is playing the same here. So there is a dissociation between those two people. The guy who does the talk and the guy who does the tap, the mm -hmm. tapping. So um, you want to try? So just do what I'm doing, kind of a cool swing rhythm like this. Relax. Try to relax as much as you can. I don't want you to go like spiritual of you, but. <laughs> <laughs> And now you're going to have a conversation with your neighbor. OK, keep doing it. Just take your neighbor and have a conversation, anything. No one is talking to you. You want to talk to me? OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But now they wouldn't stop talking. Enough. So uh, you can't really cheat because I was looking. Who could do it like without any problem at all, like easy? I think I did it. Not sure. You're not sure, so that's not a good sign. But no, you did it okay. <laughs> it was not too bad, actually. <laughs> uh, who could do it but not very well? Uh, who is really for, for whom is it really difficult? So yeah, lots of people who didn't answer anything. <laughs> <laughs> We will assume they were even worse than what you did. <laughs> okay, so basically I looked at you and I would say that probably pretty much nobody I was watching really did it accurately, which means like, like this, like no difference. So that, what that means, it's a very important thing because what that means is that when you start talking and your brain is uh, accomplishing some kind of intellectual work of some kind, your rhythm, Hello, so I'm talking to you now. Does so that mean that your rhythm gets, um, how could I say, uh, there is a conflict between the talk and the tap. There is a conflict. So which means that it's, you're like a computer that does two things at the same time and it cr and crashes. <laughs> so it's a, it's a stupid time sharing thing, really. You know, it's like those old Macintosh or whatever PCs and they try to do two things at the same time and it was over and the whole thing stopped working. So uh, that's a problem. Because think about it, if your rhythm gets screwed up, sorry, if your rhythm gets, you know, wrong as soon as you talk, try to imagine what goes on, what goes on inside of you when you start playing music, when you start playing an instrument, mm. which requires even more brain power by far than having a conversation with your neighbor about, you know, what you ate at breakfast or something. So uh, that means that when you start playing the instrument, whatever the instrument is, by the way, inside of you, what happens is, and that's what you play on. That's your internal clock at the moment you play. And that explains why in many cases, in actually a big, big number of cases, the first problem you notice in a, in a musician, in a student, and also in some musicians, is the rhythmic problem, is, is a rhythmic awkwardness, I don't know, a rhythmic lack of ease, something of stiff, something not accurate, something that's not quite working. And so as a result, it's not swinging, or it's not grooving, or it's not where it should be. And you have that feeling that, you know, it's not working in, on the rhythmic, uh, from a rhythmic point of view. That exercise actually shows you why, in a very simple way. So now, that's an exercise that you can actually do every morning. That's what I ask my students to do. I say every morning you wake up, you tap like that. 
as slowly as you wish. The slower the better at the beginning, because it's not about performance, it's about feeling relaxed. And you read the paper or magazine, you talk to your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, kids, whatever, and, and you do it. Of course, at the beginning, it will be difficult. And then after a number of days, you will notice that, oh, I'm starting to feel that dissociation. I'm trying to feel that the rhythm gets a little bit more like this way and the, the conversation gets a little bit more that way. And you will notice slowly but surely that you will get to that internalization of the rhythm. But it can take time. It can take days, weeks, or months, depending on who does it. It's also like comparable to driving. If I drive and I have somebody, you know, having a conversation with my passenger or on the phone with headphones, mm -hmm. and if as soon as I have the conversation, my feet stop responding and my arms have trouble adjusting the angle and whatever, obviously I'm going to have a very quick problem. <laughs> so uh, music is also about that. Music is about playing, you know, your instrument and being able to see where you go, you know, being able to appreciate the itinerary, being able to see who's coming, you know, the, 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 the signals being red or, 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 or green, you know, somebody having a conversation with you in the car, and still drive. Music is a lot about that. It's about, about being able to sit at your instrument and do it. Oh. <laughs> I have to think about everything I'm doing at the moment I'm playing, then I cannot really make music anymore. Then it becomes an intellectual thing and it's not what music should be. So uh, so you see that tap and talk exercise, which was only about rhythm, leads to a broader truth, which in that music itself should be internalized, should get there, not there. And this book is ac actually all about that. It's all about the exercises, the practicing methods that can lead you to internalize the music more and to bring it here where it should be, instead of here where it is for many musicians and students, which explains sometimes why it's not really musical, you know, why the music is not really moving or it's not really grooving or it's not really, doesn't give the impression of music, but gives the impression of an exercise, you know. So I'm gonna maybe do another example and take only one person. Like our friend is good in that, and Ravi's bothering me. So I'm gonna sing a phrase for you, uh, something not very difficult. So we're in C major. Sing it in this key now. Okay. This one. There we go. So you see what happens here? You don't have. This is not allowed when you improvise, because when you improvise, you don't have a few seconds to find the phrase. You have to find it immediately. So what happens when, when I do that? The phrase should be like, like boom, right away, immediately. No, not like five seconds later. It's it's a bit like uh, in in a language. I go back to language acquisition, which means uh, if I say hello, you understand me, and if I say hello and you don't understand me, then it means that you understand hello only one way, but not the other, which happens when you don't know language very well. For example, if Marco speaks Italian, the Italian is close to French, but somebody speaks Russian, for example, or Chinese, and says the exact same word in two different ways, I might think it's two different words. 
Because one, I don't speak the language fluently, and second, I don't even know what it means. You know, if I say hello, 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 in all cases, you know, you know, it's the same word because everybody speaks English fluently here. So what happens here is that you understand. Yeah. Up. So that's a problem of fluency, which means that when you improvise, that means that already what you hear in your mind is not entirely definite, is not entirely precise and understand understandable and understood. So as an improviser, you're going to have a problem. Now, the second issue is suppose that you hear everything properly, that you can do no problem. Some people can do that, and then they take their instruments, for example, guitar player often, or sometimes piano player, and they cannot play it immediately on the instrument. So now you have a, another problem of fluency, which is totally different from the first one, which is, yeah, I, I hear the language, I can, I can understand, I, but when I start to speak it with my instrument, it doesn't, I don't exactly know how to, you know, put my tongue or whatever in order to speak it. So I'm just going to finish with that. Yeah. So basically, you have really two different issues here. The first issue is, do I s can I really speak fluently the language of music? Which in your case, you see you already have already something that you <coughs> work with, with music or whatever. And then is, can I actually use my instrument to communicate it properly? And, you, you, and very often I come across the, the case of students, or musicians actually, who hear stuff well, but when it comes to the instrument, they go, po -do -ba, and it's going to take them five, ten seconds to find the phrase on the instrument. So I'm like, how can you improvise on your instrument if it takes you five seconds to find the phrase? So what they do, of course, is they compensate by mechanics. So basically, they are being played by their instrument. <laughs> their musical brain <laughs> is here, instead of being here. And that's, of course, an issue. So that's the kind of thing that I work pretty actively with my students, that and the rhythm issue. As long as you have not worked on those issues, I think it's very illusory, it's very, it, it, it's totally useless, to my opinion, to talk about intervals and theory and what should I play on such and such chord progression and how can I play a seven step to heaven, half a step above and seven four and do a rhythmic modulation in the middle. <laughs> All those kind of things are completely useless if you don't speak the language. It's like, how can I write like Proust if I don't speak French? Yeah, well, how easy it is it to learn that if someone who is well? That's a good question. It's a, it's a law. It's a, it's an apprenticeship. But basically, what I do is like lots of singing, lots of singing. I recommend always my students. I tell my students something. I say, guys, <coughs> when I wanted to listen to music, I had to buy records. I had to go to the store, buy a diamond record, expensive. Then I wanted, you know, I heard like Chris Armstrong play a phrase, and I was like, wow, this beautiful phrase. I want to, I want to, to know what it is. So I had to, you know, do this, damage the record in the cartridge, <laughs> or with cassettes, <laughs> and of course it broke after a while. <laughs> now you have YouTube. It's free, you can do whatever you want, you can even slow down the, the music without changing the pitch, for God's sake. So you like, you know, you live in a, in a, in a blessed mo moment in time where it's it's so much easier. So I say, go to YouTube, go to listen to some good musician, not Coltrane and Chris Potter and Keith Jarrett, but go listen to Louis Armstrong. <laughs> you know, because you know you can't even like I'm sure some of his phrases you can't even get them really properly. Listen to him play Western blues. You know, we don't do that. And I'll go to what he told me afterwards. Go to Louis Armstrong playing Western Blues, listen to the first head that he plays on it, which is a, is a perfect jewel. Learn it, sing it until you know it by memory, then try to sing it in another key and then try to play it on your instrument. And I work with them on that over and over again on different phrases, different, you know, different keys, different note by note. Sometimes I tell them just work on the first bar. If you can transpose the first bar, if you can transpose the first two notes, that's already good. That's already a progress compared to not hearing anything. And you have so much material on YouTube that you can use for that. 
you know, you can use like uh, Lester Young, you can use like the great singers, Billie Holiday, the Edna, Fitzgerald. Gerald, you can use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, once you, you, once you can do that pretty easily, then it's time maybe to switch to bebop, but one thing at a time, you know, learn the beginning of, the, learn the language before you go there. It takes time and it's very different from one student to the other. Because nobody here the same, nobody has the same problem. My problems are different from anybody else, you know. There are stuff that I don't really hear properly, I know. Every day I discover stuff that I don't hear properly. But everybody has his different weak points, you know, that you have to work on. So it's very different from one student to the other. I, I don't give you the subject, you know, I say to the students, you know. It's fascinating. It's, nobody has the same issue. Some people, they hear perfectly what's happening here, but they don't hear what's happening there. They don't hear the bass. So I work on bass line, singing bass line, um, transcribing bass lines like Paul Chambers, you know, or Jimmy Blanton, you know, again, you're going to the, to the roots, you know, and then try to understand how the bass line works, play it on the instrument, transpose it, hear it, sing it, and see if you can hear it and hear the melody at the same time, you know, then try to build a stereo in the student's mind. Can I hear a bass line and can I hear a melody? Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, if you have a book on a shelf, the bass is the left bookend and the melody is the right bookend. If you don't hear the bass, the book's full. If you don't hear the melody, the book's full. The book's full. If you remove the rhythm, which is the shelf itself, <laughs> then you're really full. Mm -hmm. So before we talk about chords that everybody's obsessed about, and what should I play on F7, build your shelf and get your bookends, melody and bass. And like uh, Ray Brown said, he said, you know, I just play a melody, it happens to be in the lower register, and the you know, you have the melody, you have what I play, the rest is feeling. And before you get to the feeling, you have to, <coughs> you have to, to make sure that the, the essential pieces are there, the bookend and the shelf. Uh, another, another analogy uh, is painting. Some people think they can paint without, draw, without, without knowing how to draw. And I'm like, no, I don't think you're a good painter if you cannot draw, because that means that, you know, it's, it's the same. To me, there is the element, the, the basis is not there. I'm not saying they cannot make a fortune. They can, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anybody can make a fortune these days. But I'm saying that to me, to my opinion, a good painter is somebody who starts by drawing. Picasso drew all the time, all the time. That's what all he, painting for him was like, you know, but he drew, he drew, he wanted to draw. He never did a, I don't think he ever did a painting without drawing first, without drawing what he had in mind, you know, to see what it looked like. Yeah, we will maybe do the break now. And, uh. Uh, no, I wanted to add something. The first of all, any questions at this point? Anybody for whom it doesn't make sense or? Yeah. Well, I have a question about the, the first exercise you did, the rhythm exercise. How does that relate specifically to like a musical goal? Uh, the, the, the tell the me the question again. I want to make well, sure I understand. Well, properly. in other words, like you, when we did the exercise where we were tapping the rhythm and right. speaking at the same time, and there, there's, you played with this, the diso dissociation between the two. Right. Is that, could you translate that into how that would be valuable in a musical sense? Well, it's, it's variable in the musical sense because if I'm playing like a... I don't know if I'm playing a... Like a Thank you. 
keeping the rhythm, this internal drummer. If this internal drummer, as soon as I play, does... my internal drama, it's my little friend, you know? So if that little friend does chick kidding, chick kidding, I'm fine. But if that friend starts doing chick kidding, chick kidding, chick kidding, because he's bothered by whatever intellectual activity I'm doing while I'm playing, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow him. And that's why so many people, when they play solo, they start, you know, by playing a standard, and they're like... <laughs> and the guy inside does <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you hear and that's what you hear and that's what you feel the guy has to keep doing that you see you have to have a good drummer inside of you in order to be a good musician otherwise the quality of the drummer is going to be the quality of your music at the end of the rhythmic quality of your music right but developing the ability to speak over that de right. enables you to develop the ability to go outside of the rhythm and still have it going on underneath. Yeah, it, you never go outside of the rhythm. You just play oh, with right. it. Yeah. You know, outside of the rhythm, it doesn't, you know, to me, doesn't mean much. I would say it gives you the freedom to do whatever you want and still have that rhythmic right. clarity inside of you, that rhythmic uh, accuracy, you know, that rhythmic, uh, not precision, I don't like that word, but that rhythmic feel. It allows you to simply play whatever you want on top of a feel that stays correct that stays what it should be mm -hmm. and if, if that field gets screwed up what happens is that and I, I learned that the hard way by listening to my own tapes that sometime I listen to my tapes and I went where am I where am I I was listening to a, st to a standard and I was like I don't even know where I am and I was like if I don't know where I am how could we listen and know where I am that led me to the fact that I realized that as a player I have to to be a good drummer inside of myself and I also have to be a good listener of myself while I was playing. So that when I play, I could notice immediately that something's wrong instead of being like, oh, this is so good. And then three days later, <laughs> listening to the recording, I'm like, oh my God. But that's another subject. Just, uh, I'm gonna end up with this, with this email that I received this morning uh, of this student, and we, uh, Marco was on copy, and that guy asked me, you say I should listen to Louis Armstrong playing West End Blues and I should just sing it and I don't really, I'm not quite sure I understand why I should do that. <laughs> and that's a very, you know, it's, it's, it sounds silly and funny, but it's a very interesting thing that happened to me very often, actually, more often than you would think or hope with some students is that they ask you, why do I have to do that? And I'm like, why do you have to listen to your parents when you learn a language? Well, you know, because that's the way you're going to learn it. So s people are not even aware, for the most part, that it's a language. People are not even aware, for the most part, that oral tradition is going to be the way to learn music. It sounds absurd. When I'm saying it, to me, it sounds absurd. But many people have this thing that, yeah, well, that's not how I learn it. I'm going to buy a real book. I'm going to learn theory. I'm going to learn F7 and all the modes and the rhythmic modulations and stuff. Why do I need to listen to Riz Armstrong? So you see how they make that huge, to me, like this fundamental mistake is that they think that music is like, you learn music like you learn how to, to cook pasta, you know, like with receipts. So you always have to remember that. Music is really about oral tradition. Mm -hmm. It's about the sound, it's about the atmosphere, it's about what you receive, and it's about the way you can express it with a, with a certain language. So listening to Louis Armstrong play Western blues is less like listening to mommy when you're two years old. Of course, you don't need to listen to mommy when you're two, when you're two years old, but you know, that's another subject. Yes? So, um, attached to this workshop ad was a, a site for your little tape. There was a 10 minute tape on the subject. Right. On singing, um, listening and singing. And so I took the idea to my teacher, because I am relatively new at the jazz piano, and um, I really don't have any ideas what I'm doing, trying to improvise. 
So I said, this is what he said, let's try it. So I sang something and he wrote it down and it came out so wonderful. It was just so Yeah, I mean, you don't even need to write it down, actually. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Do not write it down. Because if you write it down, it becomes a visual thing already, you know? You don't have to write you don't, it down. Don't write it down. Just leave the paper aside, you know? Can you believe that somebody like Errol Garner, as everybody knows Errol Garner, the jazz king, he couldn't write music. I, I'm sure he did not want to write this. Because he knew that if he wrote it, it would become something different. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to write it down. You, you, you just register it in your mind. You know? like Same like, you don't need to know how to write to speak a language. Like, again, I go to the case of kids, you know, who can write before they, or can speak before they can write. Don't write it down. Just sing it and play it. Don't. You can even dispense with the paper, let's say. You know, you'll see it's even more wonderful when you don't have the paper first. You look like you want to ask a question. Uh, I, no, I was. I was <laughs> thinking. Uh, I, 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 I grew up in a musical family. My godmother was Nadia Boulanger. Oh, and, wonderful! And, wow. And she. Yeah, um, so sure. And so I didn't get to meet her, though I have letters from her from when I was a little boy. Yeah. Right. Um, and. So I found, a, I found somebody who studied with her because I wanted to find out who she was and what she was about. And uh, so she took me through the first couple of lessons that Nadia had given her. And they were like a one, five, one or one, four, one cadences. Mm -hmm. But she didn't tell you what they were. She just showed you how to play them. And in the different inversions it said, okay, go home and learn how to play them in all keys. Mm -hmm. And not, without any knowledge, and then what she said was, when when she, you, she could come back later, then she would explain what they meant. Yeah, later. <laughs> you know, yeah, so it, it just ties in exactly what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you know the the meaning comes naturally once you understand the language. The meaning comes naturally. Yeah, and yeah. And, and if I may, another one. My my musical father was a guy named Ruby Graff, who was uh, yeah, yeah, true. Sure. And that's what he did with me. We would sit around and listen to Louis Armstrong records, and oh. And he would give me a set of brushes and say, okay, yeah, exactly. while we're listening, play, play, play. That's play, perfect. That's play. perfect. Couldn't be better. You know, my kid, my, my, my kids go to the piano to play. Uh -huh. I try to show them stuff, but they push me. They say, no, no, no. <laughs> I cannot show anything. Well, they start playing songs on the piano. I never show them anything. I can't even show them anything. Sometimes they ask, Daddy, what the first note? I'm like, okay, the first note. <laughs> okay, now, now go, go. Now. <laughs> they don't want me to show them. But Actually, they are afraid that if I show them, they won't be able to do it. So they do it like naturally and they just start to play a song even with the two hands. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean the meaning of the song, I mean it has no meaning. It's music, you know, actually in a way. Music doesn't really mean anything. But by meaning I mean, you know, the the, the ability then to use it in your vocabulary and improvise and, and stuff like that. But that you discover naturally. You know, I think you discover naturally once you once you speak the language. But that's exactly what, you know, what, what they do, they listen, they go to the instrument, they try stuff, and to them, it, 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 that's what music is. We have to become and that's the right way, I think that's the right way to learn music, regardless of age, regardless of level, regardless of style, regardless of anything. 